We are going to take a look at how to navigate and filter a list of products using Angular CDK. If you'd like to follow along in a written tutorial, it's linked in the description below. This is the StackBlitz demo, what it is that we're going to be building. And this is linked in the description below if you want to open it up and play with it. So if we uh, go ahead and go in our search field here and then use the arrow keys, we can move up, move down and wrap around. And if we hit enter, it'll select uh, the current item and it'll print it out at the bottom there. All right, so here we are on our StackBlitz demo and uh, you may have noticed that we used Materialize to style the uh, list and the uh, search field. And to do that, we have to import the uh, materialized style sheet from the CDN. And that's what we're doing here in index.html. And since this is a fairly simple uh, demonstration, we're just going to walk through the StackBlitz demo instead of uh, creating everything from scratch like we normally do. If we take a look at our dependencies down here, you can see that we have Angular CDK version 13.3.7. And that gives us the list key manager that we're going to be using to manage the key navigation. Now, if you're following along in the written tutorial and you want to install this from scratch, just go down here and type um, Angular CDK and hit enter and it'll install it again for you like that. Angular CDK comes with two types of list key managers. The first is a focus key manager and the second is an active descendants key manager. And for this demo, we're going to be using the active descendants key manager to manage the uh, selection and navigation of the product components. So in order to initialize the active descendant key manager instance, we first need to get all of the view children that we have in our template that are instances of the product component. And as you can see, we're doing that here with a at view children query. And then once we have the product components that we're going to be navigating, we can go ahead and initialize our key manager. And we do that down here. Uh, we pass in the uh, product instances here, and then we call the with wrap, which causes the uh, list to wrap when we get to the end of it. And we want to navigate back to the beginning. And we're also using with type ahead, which allows us to select an item within the list by searching for it. And we see down here that we have an uh, on key up event listener. And when we hit enter, that is going to go ahead and assign the currently selected product to our selection property. And uh, if we're navigating with the keys, we go ahead and forward the key navigation to the key manager by calling all key down and passing in the event. Let's have a look at our template that we're using to implement our application. So we can see up here that we have a input field and uh, the key up event listener is bound to our on key up function within our application. And uh, that is what delegates the enter events to uh, the selection of the current item and the keyboard navigation to the key, ma key manager. We have a section element here that we are using as a collection container for all our product components. And the way we initialize our product components is that we uh, iterate through the array of products and then we go ahead and initialize each product component instance by passing in the uh, product from the array iteration. And lastly, if the user hits enter, we go ahead and display what product the user selected down here. All right, now since we're displaying product components, we have to have a product component to display. And uh, since we're implementing the Ascendant Key List Manager, we need to also implement these interfaces. The highlightable interface, which is responsible for highlighting each item selected, and the uh, List Key Manager interface. And this just tells us whether the uh, product is disabled or what the label is. We also see up here that when the uh, is active property is set to true, that adds the uh, active class to our element via this host binding. So as we can see here, the template for the product component is very lightweight. We have an ng container that we are using to mark the component as disabled if we wish to disable it. And the content for the product component itself is being displayed via ng content. So let's go ahead and open up our demo so that we can see how this works once more. So here we are, and if we just go into the search field and start navigating, we can uh, flip through our items like that using the keyboard. And if we search for something, for example, Dino, 
that selected for us. And if we hit enter, we get Dinobot selected. If we go down to Barbie, hit enter, Barbie is selected. Now we notice that in our implementation, we also have a filter pipe. And uh, what that does is allow us to filter down the uh, number of items when we type in the search field. So in order to add that, we can go ahead and go to our app component template. And on our iteration of the product array, we'll go ahead and paste in the filter. And the way this works now is when we type, for example, Dino, we see that only Dino is selected. And uh, so if you wish to add filtering capabilities to your uh, search selection, that is how you would go about doing that. And just for completeness, as always, of course, we have to register our filter pipe and our product component within our module. And so this is the place where we would do that. We hope you enjoyed this uh, brief tutorial. And as always, the written tutorial and the stack blitz is linked in the description below. So please go ahead and check that out. Leave any questions, comments for us, and we will see you in the next one.